Hey partners, it's today I grew up. I'm really excited today because this is the podcast. This is the second guest I ever have on my podcast. Thank you so much for the first one. We got 10,000 views on that and I'm just blown away. So today we have a special guest. Who am I with today? Hi guys, um, my name is Emily Hahn and you might know me as Bonnie from Toy Story 3. You're watching Today I Grew Up. Hey partners, most of my views come from non-subscribers, so please consider subscribing today. Hit that alert so you'll be notified for future videos. It helps me as I'm on my way to 100,000 subs this year. Really appreciate it. Who am I with today? Hi guys, um, my name is Emily Hahn, and you might know me as Bonnie from Toy Story 3. Uh, that's my connection to the Toy Story world. Awesome, and then we're really excited to have you here. I get questions about Bonnie daily on my channel i just want to let really? you know yeah and, and it's not just toy story 4 bonnie i get questions about toy story 3 bonnie because in the community we have this rift of like toy story 3 bonnie is different than toy story 4 bonnie and here's why Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a little so bit it's, so it's pretty <laughs> funny i don't know so we'll get to that fun stuff later i want to just start first with the you know the intro stuff how, how does somebody get approached to be like hey do you want to be a voice actor for Toy Story 3, like how does that process even start? Like where, where did that begin for you? Can you tell us your journey or something? That'd be great. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, my journey is like very specific to me. So I, you know, I don't know if there's any like general principles you can pull from this, but um, so I was, I grew up in a town called Ojai, California. Like um, I grew up on a ranch, I was a tomboy girl. I still am. Nice. <laughs> um, and I, I guess I'll give the full story. I had been going to school. Uh, I guess I would have been seven at the time. Okay. And I had been, I had been really badly bullied. Um, and I, my parents thought I needed an outlet. Um, actually, I think I kind of came up with the idea. There was an article in the Ohio newspaper about the Ohio Art Center putting on productions and how like people could get involved. And I told them like, hey, I want to try theater. And um, after being bullied, I just, like I said, I needed something to put my energy towards and mm -hmm. to get excited about something. So I did a few performances and then I booked um, a non-speaking role in The Music Man. Nice. Uh, so I was like, not like, you know, I was not like a <laughs> profound actor or anything. I was yeah. just a kid Le who wanted learning. to, yeah, this kid who wanted to like, you know, try something new. And then somebody was in the audience for one of the last showings of The Music Man. And um, her name was Janine Cosden. and she's since passed away, but she's like okay. the reason I'm here. Like wow. I would not be here without her. She has changed my life forever. Wow. Um, and so she approached me and my parents, you know, I was seven. Uh, and she said, hey, like, you know, I think your daughter could be an actress. Like mm -hmm. I'd love, she was a manager. So she was like, I'd love to introduce her to the business. I'd love to, um, you know, take, you know, and yeah, take her to an agent yeah, yeah. and introduce her to that world. Yeah. And I was like, I think that my parents were a bit skeptical mm. and so was I because coming from like a ranch. Right. Of, You're like kind of sheltered and secluded or something like right. kind of from the outside world. It's like, what's this show business? <laughs> right. And um, yeah, like my dad was a doctor and so I grew up kind of like very not in the arts world, uh, you know, tomboy, dad was a doctor, not really at all. Like, yeah. Nothing would have pulled me that direction if it weren't mm -hmm. for her. But after thinking about it, we kind of were, we all just decided like, okay, you know, this can be fun. Like I could try this for fun and we'll see where it goes and we won't take it that seriously because it's such a crazy industry. We know nothing about it. Right. <laughs> so um, I went to an agency, CESD, who I'm still with now, which is awesome. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> so she, Janine brought me there. They signed me and nice. I got my first audition, which was for a voiceover. Okay. And my first question to Janine, uh, my, who was my manager at the time, mm -hmm. was what's a voiceover? I have no idea what a voiceover <laughs> is. Like I'd right. grown up seeing animated movies, but I guess I just... 
I don't know. We hadn't put the pieces. Right. It's like, how does this even work? You know, when you're watching an animated film, it's like, you don't even know, like, what's going right. on behind the scenes. And especially <laughs> as a kid, you're like, you don't yeah. think, oh, Woody, Tom Hanks, you know, Woody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they probably no live in there. <laughs> right. That's funny. And so um, I got this voiceover and it was like, you could tell it was a very sweet script, but it was also, they didn't describe the project. It was super okay. like, did super you get the whole script too or did you get like snippets just for your part of the script no or? i so that's the other crazy thing so i yeah. just got like a faux script for oh okay audition like i don't even remember it but it was something it had okay. no reference to the toy story world right i ended up getting called back i got called back like just like seven like five to seven different times oh wow and then eventually you know they said this is for the new toy story and I was like, <laughs> at seven, eight years old, I had, I was like, I yeah. see these characters on TV and the movie. Like, I see them as characters I grew up with. Right, I don't right. Know how I'm like, I don't know, like auditioning for it. So I just, I mean, I kind of understood, but I kind of didn't. Interesting. I just was having fun. And then, yeah, it was my first audition like one of my first auditions ever wow um, I think I had gone out for a commercial one like before okay that, and that's it yeah and you kind of so like it kind of like broke the veil in reality because imagine being a kid and she's like I'm not and now I'm inside of that movie how does it wait what's that <laughs> so I could see how yeah. that was really confusing for you at seven yeah. you know? <laughs> I really didn't know what I was doing but Lee Uncrit the director yeah. and Darla um the Darla Anderson the producer yeah. they made me so comfortable they made me just like they really just made a safe environment for me to have fun in and it, that's awesome like i didn't ever get a script they lee would just give me my lines yeah um he would just tell me like oh say this now but i never got a full script i never mm. got anything wow and then it wasn't until um the premiere that i found out i like bonnie got the toys i knew oh, wow. <laughs> that's that. crazy and, and at the end like I, we were sitting in the audience and like the, you know the end moment is so climactic yeah it's so emotional <laughs> yeah it's heartbreaking for so many people because it's yeah. like the end of their childhood and yeah you know, at, it's eight ten years old because when it came out I would have been 10 right uh, you know I just didn't have any concept of that but but I yeah that's how I got into it it was just yeah. kind of like random but not I just you know fell into this world and yeah what to do and it, that's I mean, amazing I super lucky like i honestly <laughs> think i was just really lucky that is amazing thank you for sharing that that's like really cool to just kind of see like the process behind the scenes and like for those who don't know out there lee Unkrich actually was an editor and he actually was a co-director for some of the earlier f films alongside john lassiter so him coming in for toy story 3 he was the director for the first time at that time for that project but like, that's really cool. I saw some videos on YouTube and I was like, he seemed like a really nice guy to like work with. And especially like, oh, yeah. he was really good with kids. So it seemed like, so that was really good. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I remember like, oh, I just had the best time with Lee and Darla because they were both always okay. there. Awesome. Like we'd go get donuts and <laughs> oh, cool. I came there, there would be chocolate covered strawberries. And I was always so excited about that. That's awesome. So, I mean, my memory of it is mm -hmm. just like, I was hanging out with these two really cool adults who were like, awesome and we're you know so, creating something that I had no idea what we were doing right and, and where was the studio located was that in Emeryville California or somewhere else no so it was at um the Walt Disney Studios in like the okay. Pas Air Burbank Pasadena area okay so it's not too like far probably from where you were it's not like you had to like live there for a while yeah. or okay, no I was good. still driving I was my um my mom was still okay me and from Ohio. nice <laughs> um, and then my yeah I actually Technically, I was born in Pasadena and oh, like, cool. commuted between Ohio and Pasadena. So, oh, I was, was born and raised in Glendale, so I totally know oh, your area. Yeah, yeah so that's like my town. <laughs> We're from the same cool. place. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I grew up there, so um, that's awesome. But yeah, I I really loved just like the whole thing. A lot of people when they connected with Toy Story three at the end of the movie, it was all emotional. It was just like, like you said, it was just like the end of a childhood. And a lot of people actually were upset that Toy Story 4 happened in some ways from the old school fans. Um, there was some a part of them that were like, no, I'm not gonna watch it. Toy Story 3 was the perfect ending, that's it. <laughs> and then oh and then you have the, you know, everybody else who, like me, I'm just a fan of everything. I loved everything mm -hmm. about Toy Story 4 too. Um, so anyways, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit, but 
Um, I, I saw something online and I was like, you didn't actually interact with uh, John Morris, the guy who voiced Andy uh, in person when you were doing that. Was that done? On separ- you never saw him? Can you tell I me a story saw, about that? <laughs> never saw anybody okay. <laughs> while I was filming. But uh-huh. I did I did meet John. I think I met him at, I'm trying, I, well, I met him at the premiere. Okay. And then For I the saw first him, like, time? Was that the first time you met him? First time I <laughs> oh, met wow. Him and I was like, I don't know. I was so young that, I mean, he was so cool, but I, I mean, he was Andy and I grew up with Andy. So I think it was like, wait, you're (laughs) you're him. Uh, But he's so nice. Like he's the nicest guy. That's Um, so cool. And I just remember meeting him and being like, wow, these people are so cool. Yeah. I think I remember hearing an interview somewhere where, where John was like, yeah, I heard the voice of Bonnie and I looked and I was like, are you Bonnie? (laughs) Something like that. Something like (laughs) that. I was like, I that's know, funny. I know what you're talking about. Okay, okay, that's hilarious. I think that's cool. He, John Morris actually gave a shout out to this channel. It was really fun. Oh, cool. I, I, yeah, I, I talked to him once. He did a little thing for our channel. It was really fun. That's um, so just fun. really heartfelt. He's such a nice guy, and he has the same voice, which is really interesting. So <laughs> I feel like it hasn't really changed much from back then. L- lucky him. But, <laughs> lucky but, him. <laughs> yeah, and I really wanted to ask you this. Um, so, you know, it's been so many years since Bonnie and Toy Story Three. Do you feel like was there ever a point where you're like, can I still do the Bonnie voice? Like, is it always part of you somewhere in there where you could probably reach something like that? Yeah, out? I mean, okay. I still do it for people. Like, okay. I, I have to, I, I could do it right now. Does that bother you? Does that bother you when people ask? No, <laughs> that... no it doesn't bother me. Okay. I still have like such a warm place in my heart for Bonnie. Like, I'm so thankful I got to play her. And Okay, awesome. Can you give me some like awesome, like your favorite Bonnie lines and your best yeah. Bonnie voice? Okay. We'd love to hear that. Okay. Let's see. Remember, I've hit people. Okay. I'm right just, you know, so it, it may not be as you know um cute <laughs> okay so i guess i would this is the one i usually give Woo, over mr prickle pants we have a guest i love uh, that so what? <laughs> you want some coffee don't drink too much or you'll have to have to be right back <laughs> i love that scene that's so fun <laughs> thank you for doing that i really appreciate that the fans really love hearing that stuff you actually sound really good like it really sounds like toy story 3 when you say that really so. I, yeah I, it does when i do it i can still feel like the little kid in me and right how, how i would do it and yeah it, it's just fun to tap into it it's like, that is really cool thank you for sharing that it's really awesome um so basically i when i was looking back on everything and and, and seeing the progression from Toy Story 3 to Toy Story 4. So when Toy Story 4 was happening, was that ever like, were you ever approached for that kind of thing? Or was it just like in their mind, they didn't come? Like, what was that? Because there was a new Bonnie for Toy Story 4, I believe. Right, Yeah. right. So I had um, done Toy Story 3 and then I had like, after Toy Story 3, there were video games and short films. You did the shorts, right? Like Small right. Fry, Hawaiian Vacation. Yeah. And so okay. I did those and then I think when I was 14, because I remember I was about to start high school, um, I just got like a call saying like, oh, you know, she's not going to be part of the fourth one. Um, okay. We love her, but she's, you know, too old now. And I remember like, mm-hmm. 14 year old me, I was like, I was so sad because like, this has been, you know, my home for so right. long and my family. Uh, yeah. It, you know, I was so close to my heart. But I also understood, like, you know, I'm going yeah. through puberty, and if they're not aging her up enough, then, right. you know, I'm not really the right, I, you know, I'm too old. Yeah, and- I mean, it's crazy, because it's like, it is a nine year gap. But maybe in the Toy Story world, it's like, what, like, maybe it was only a year or two, I think, or something right. like yeah, that. Yeah, it's so, I mean, so. it's so different how these things, like, you know yeah play out in real life versus in- if i was in charge i would have totally hired you <laughs> I'm just oh, if you. i was in charge i would have hired you back in a heartbeat because i think you sound amazing and it's great and <laughs> like you. it's like you are bonnie to me like no offense to the new bonnie you will always be bonnie to me and the fan- oh, a lot of the fans you. out there so well, and it, yeah well i was just gonna say like i wish her well like she seems yeah. so cool and like she you know bonnie is so great in toy story right. 4 and like no hard feelings like right I, good all love all love. <laughs> oh yeah for me same here i have no hate against anyone i love everybody but I, you know 
if I have to pick a favorite, it'll be you. <laughs> but <laughs> any, anyways, <laughs> let's move past that. Um, I definitely want to talk about Toy Story 4. And what are your what were your thoughts? Just now that's probably the first time you watched it as just a fan now that you're not involved. Like, was it a different experience for you watching Bonnie in Toy Story 4? Did you watch the movie? I'm just assuming I, you watched it. <laughs> well, I remember I it's been kind of a busy year, but yeah, I, know. Um, I remember I watched I yeah, I think I watched it. Mm -hmm. um or at least a part of it and I really like I loved it I thought it was great I yeah it's definitely a different I mean it's like you know there's a 10 year difference between like 2010 Toy Story and um when did this one 2019 yeah 2000 okay 2019 Toy Story 4 oh yeah 10 year difference yeah and so you can see just like the technological advances like in animation and right um I mean, I thought it was great. Like, I love, I still love the story and all the toys. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, I mean, it's just so, it's so good. I loved it. Is there, is there a part of you that'd be like, oh my gosh, like that Bonnie sounds like my Bonnie, <laughs> like a little oh, bit. Yeah. <laughs> you I could kind of tell. It and I was like. <laughs> kind of like whoa that sounds like me oh crazy but also like her like she brings her own essence to the role and, yeah um technology cool yeah and I think the technology is amazing because if you look at like things like you know Don Rickles he's rest in peace he passed away but they were still able to use his clips for Toy Story 4 um even though he wasn't around yeah, yeah they use that I didn't know that yeah well I guess I don't know when they filmed it in relation oh yeah I know it was all weird times but yeah I, I read in an article hopefully it's true that they when he passed they used archives of his audio and then they superimposed it with oh, wow. the movie and they it, so yeah cool. and the I family mean, was okay with it <laughs> so, great that he got yeah. I mean that's beautiful yeah awesome so I want to ask you do you have any Toy Story toys like personally and do you have a favorite <laughs> Toy Story toy oh you I do um, <laughs> I want to know about this <laughs> oh um I'll show you I have three right here I have more but um awesome. the, the three I have I'm kind of sitting out right now because I'm in the process of moving so I just uh, oh no yeah. problem <laughs> so, all right everybody Bonnie's real toys <laughs> so I guess this would be the first one it's nice. Bonnie I love it um, this one I think was only sold in the UK yes it but was. um yeah, oh yeah you would you'd probably know <laughs> no. than me do you know that that <laughs> one is going for like I've seen it for two thousand dollars on eBay before. Two thousand. So, yeah, yeah. Somebody was trying to sell it for two over two thousand. I mean, if it's a mint in the box, it's worth more. So I'm just letting you know. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. do I sell You're it? You're like, hold on to it until you can buy a car, and then I would sell it. Probably. Right. Oh yeah. my gosh, that is amazing. that's awesome. And it talks, oh. right? Can you? Does it talk? Or? It does. Well, it has my voice in it. But oh, it nice. <laughs> batteries ran out yeah no that's fine don't worry about it <laughs> and then oh this, cool um this is the woody okay wait i'm trying to remember the exact story i think i think lee gave me this while we were oh filming. wow that's he also awesome. gave me a buzz light ear oh cool that's also somewhere in the room i don't yeah, know don't exactly it. <laughs> where it's at but it's over there um this is probably my favorite because of like that's the cool. memories of filming and working with lee and darla and then this awesome. is, um, so P yeah, Pixar will like send, they would send me gifts like every, you know, holiday season or whatever. That's amazing. And so then this is like Mr. Prickle Pants. Oh yes. I love that um, one. Yeah. It's a collection version. Yeah. I had that one too. Yeah. Really? I one. Yeah. I have that also. I'm to, like, get <laughs> but I don't have the box. Get, you have the box. The box is really cool. I do have the box. I don't know. He's not turning upside down. To That's awesome. <laughs> Okay. that's cool well thank you for sharing that with us that's really fun toys those are really fun. I'm, I'm glad I had them right out there <laughs> yeah I just want to let you know Bonnie's toys was some of the hardest toys for me to collect that I call you know Toy Story 3 Bonnie's room toys really? okay. yeah because just the things are so rare and like hold on let me show you something this this dolly by the way it's a custom dolly oh real wow it was it was made by my friend in Brazil Oh, so cool. he made this and signature collection did make a version like the toy companies did do one but they never made it with the little tooth in the mouth like the movie oh i didn't even realize <laughs> that wow yeah so it's like I the little details you know it's amazing. fun <laughs> yeah and my other special toy of bonnie's toys in my collection i wanted to show you was this movie accurate size trixie oh my it God. is huge 
I never it, realized Trixie was that big. Yeah, it, in the real world, we did like the measurements and stuff, all my nerd friends and I. <laughs> we realized that it would be this big and the mouth opens and closes <laughs> and the feet move as well. The tail comes off if you want to store it and the I head moves as well. Amazing. This I thing amazing. is custom made for my friend uh, Steve from Toy Story QC in Canada. So he made this for me. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, Steve, that's they, awesome. They never made this. Can you believe the toy companies never made a movie accurate size trick? They should. They, they never totally did. They totally should. <laughs> right? They should do it. Awesome. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I want to share that with you because, you know, Bonnie stories. <laughs> yeah, so. I have like a buttercup. Um, oh, cool. I think I have a Trixie somewhere. Nice. Yeah, I have them all. Like, they're so special to me. And I realized, yeah. like, I was just putting them away in special places because I was so worried about losing them and I realized I was never like looking at them or enjoying right. them because I was just afraid that they would yeah you know, like get uh, <laughs> I would people lose them. people don't know this but they're like this like the stock market if you hold on to them long enough you can cash in on them if you really want to <laughs> I because, love that That's so, so funny. because like some of the toys I, I valued I praised my collection recently from somebody and they said it's worth way of ten to fifteen thousand dollars now. My collection. Wow. So it's 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 mind boggling to me. I'm like, it's not for sale because it's sentimental to me. I want to like right. hand it off to my kids to the next generation. Um, but that's just me. I don't really care about the money. I'm more for like the the value and like the emotional sentimental value of it. So, so cool. it wow. brings yeah. joy to me and everybody. So right. yeah, that's yeah. that's worth you know. It's there's priceless. No price. Yeah, there's no price. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so what was your favorite character in Toy Story Three outside of you know Bonnie's oh. character? <laughs> Gosh, my favorite character. I mean, well, we could start anywhere. Wherever. I remember when I was on the red carpet for the premiere. I, my favorite character, and it, honestly, it still kind of is my favorite character was Bullseye. Oh, nice. I grew up like, I just, I don't know why, I just connected with with bullseye I yeah just, he's awesome yeah, <laughs> yeah he's sitting mean, right here <laughs> yeah i just yeah. i guess i don't know i can't even tell you why but i love bullseye and it's still i think he's like favorite. i mean did you grow up like in a ranch maybe it was like the horse connection or something yeah i didn't grow up with horses but i grew up with okay. big dogs and so okay. I, think, I think bullseye reminds <laughs> me of like that gentle right. spirit that's just there to mm -hmm. cheer you on and be your companion so it was so funny because I was watching Toy Story 3 and I remember hearing Bullseye whimper like a dog. He'd be like, mm, mm, you know, like right, he'd right. whimper like a dog. <laughs> and I'd be like, that's so funny. He's just like Woody's dog or something like loyal dog or something. Yeah. <laughs> but I he's love a horse. That. I love their, like their connection yeah. with each other. And I just, yeah, I love Bullseye. I mean, I, even though he was the villain, I love lots of hug and bear. Like, oh, I, yeah, I mean, I just love that character so much. That's great. Um, yeah, I. That's awesome. Well, I still, that's my favorite. That's great. Well, that's so awesome that you you still have all this connection. And I was asking some fans out there if they had any questions for you, and and some of them asked me if you had. They wanted to know if you had anything from your childhood that besides outside Toy Story that you cherished, like a special blankie, a special plush, a special toy, something that you felt was like your connection to like you know Andy and Woody. Did you have a toy like that in that's your life? That's such a great question. Yeah. Um. Well, I grew up with a blanket. Okay. So I would say like, I was very, you know, close with this. I called it pink, pink blankie when I was younger. So oh, nice. Was, like, that was my, my go-to, but I also, let me, I still have like a few of my childhood favorite toys. Um, I had like this, this cow toy. It was just like this mini cow. And I, that was like something that was super <laughs> close to my heart. That's awesome. Um, I had a giant caterpillar that oh, I was wow. like, I kept forever. Was it a plush and, or something? Yeah, it was a, it was plush and it was. Okay. It was like very, it was huge though. It was like seven feet long. It was. Oh, wow. Was, <laughs> That's cool. And, and I <laughs> would like, just, just cuddle like, with it. <laughs> yeah. I just, this caterpillar was like my childhood. So I, awesome. I like loved toys growing up. I loved Littlest Pet Shop. I loved Webkins. I loved. Oh yeah. I remember those. Another, <laughs> there was another group of. Yeah, I'm a 2000s kid. So uh, okay, yeah. My totally. toys are going to be very specific <laughs> right. to that. Yeah, Webkins yeah, was like, like the first, like, oh my gosh, that's high tech because it connects to the computer somehow. <laughs> right. I would go, oh, and I remember, I remember one that. Time, one time I had to get a shot, like a flu vaccine. Yeah. And I was bribed, but with the Webkins. Um, oh, that's awesome. That made it worth it. I was like, okay. 
that's so great you can stab me again that's That's so funny yeah when i was a kid i was more like action figures i was a typical like i love those little jurassic park action figures or just anything action figure like i needed an action figure you know okay yeah because like i could like throw them around or something (laughs) that's great um another question i got was what toy story song would be a good theme for your life if you could pick one of them because there's so many toy story songs oh my gosh (laughs) i know it's a hard one but like you know I guess the one that comes to mind is <laughs> you've got a friend in me. Like, yeah. I, I would say that like, I'm not a perfect human being, but I would say that's yeah. like my aspirational life goal is like, that's great. Be that to whoever I come in contact with. Cause. Oh yeah. definitely. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for answering that. And then the last fan question that I had was, are you working on any projects currently? Um, right now I'm still just, I'm up for a few things, but I'm still waiting to hear back on them. I'm not, okay currently like working on a project mm-hmm. um yeah especially during the pandemic it's been oh, pretty, yeah. pretty that quiet totally, that totally changed a lot and that's the thing too i think it's changed the game for everybody you know for me i found a platform online because we're stuck at home so what better way to try to be online and make a platform but right. um is your i know when i looked up your imdb you you consider yourself an actress and a voice actress are you mainly one or the other do you prefer one or the other or do you just like being open-minded um, to everything or what <laughs> when I was younger I definitely did more voice work and re- mo- more recently I've done like more on camera stuff I, I did a film it came out in 2018 called Beautifully Broken oh cool totally cool. different from Toy Story it was like yeah. really serious and I'll definitely it, check it out that was really awesome like I loved that project so much awesome. and I I mean I would say I do both but more recently it's been more on camera work Okay. And you have an agent and everything and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And then people approach you in for jobs and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I still audition, like I still do the awesome. audition grind. So I'm so still cool. like, you know, working on things and trying to just get better because you know, you can always, yeah, work. I would love to, I'm going to do that and like reach out to you another time. And like, I would love to collab and like, I would totally hire you for like voice acting for a project. Cause oh, cool. I have so Thank many you. ideas. And I would love to have you on again. And I know the fans would go crazy to have you on again. So, I I, okay, awesome. Thank you so much for that. And then um, I guess one more question I had for the Toy Story world. Um, I guess what's your favorite Toy Story movie besides Toy Story 3 outside of that? Like, is there one oh. that you prefer more than the other? I know it's hard. My favorite is Toy Story 2, just because I love the Roundup Gang. And just that it was so crazy with the Zerg and Buzz dynamic. And it was just... I don't know. There's just so many laughs in that one that that's my personal, like if I had to pick one, Toy Story 2 would be my favorite. <laughs> I, I like, I'm trying, wait, Pizza Planet. What? I, that was two, right? That was Toy Story 1 also. That was Toy Story 1. Yeah. Oh, why am I confused? I'm, I yeah. know people always tell me that too. They'd be like, wait, Pizza Planet wasn't in Toy Story 1. I'm like, mm, no, it was. Cause that's where they went to go. Uh, f- remember Sid gets uh, Woody and Buzz back to his house. But he gets right. in the claw machine of pizza. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's it. So, okay. Yeah. Well then I guess one. I mean, one is like iconic. The animation is so like Yeah. Uh, that's true. Really historical too. Like oh, yeah. such a for and I wasn't alive when it first came out. But <laughs> right. but it, from what I read, like it's was a very like a pretty big shift in animation and, and media yeah. in general. So yeah I'd say the first one just because of what it represents and I also love Pizza Planet like I every time I'd go to Disneyland I'd be like (laughs) I have to go to Pizza Planet because I just had that connection I love um I love going to Disney Uh, obviously I have a pass because I'm only an hour away from Disneyland Mm -hmm. I go all the time I'm actually going for the Disney days they have coming up which is really fun oh cool Um, oh that's right they're okay yeah you should go check it out if I mean obviously keep safe out there wear your mask but (laughs) you know if you can go I recommend it it's just so much fun I do a lot of Disney trips too and stuff but that's really fun that you you still are a fan of that um so my other question is uh for oh oh yes do you have any relationships with like any other voice actors like Eric Von Deaton who did like Sid, the voice of Sid. Oh. You ever met him or talked to him or anybody else? I think I met him. I'm, oh, I, cool. I, I think I did uh, at the premiere because I met a bunch of a bunch of the cast at the premiere. Okay. And there was then there was a, a pre Oscar party that I met some of them at again as well. Oh, nice. Um, but right now, I mean, I have friends who do voiceovers 
like I I grew up doing ADR too so mm -hmm. just like additional voice work in films right, right. And I made a lot of friends that way I'm still friends with some of them um That's not awesome. not right now not anybody specifically like from the cast okay. story but okay yeah, I want to, that's what I want to do here is I want to like, you know, you, I had you on, I want to start interviewing just everybody and like start connecting everyone. It'd be so cool. Like yeah. maybe, yeah, it's just so fun that after all these years, people are still passionate about Toy Story. Like it's not something that's ever going to go away. <laughs> you know, it's like a yeah, legacy. It's amazing. Like our, I mean, becoming a part of it was such an amazing experience. Like, yeah. I don't think I, I mean, I love Toy Story, but I don't think I realized the magnitude of like the community around yeah. Toy Story. It's such a, it's such a beautiful thing to have so many people that that love it and that kind of connect through that that common, common thread. Yeah, and I and I always tell people here on this channel like work hard, you know, never give up, follow your dreams, um, make impossible and impossible. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. And, th and that's something I always see when I see art. Like when you see a project like Toy Story, think about all the heart that went into the writing, all, all the work that went into like designing the characters and coming up with the personality for the voice actors right. and actresses. And it's just like, when you see all that, it's just like, oh my gosh, like I'm so inspired. And Toy Story inspired me, that creativity within me. So when I create things, uh, it's just like, it takes it to another level. And like, that's why I like building this community of dreamers basically where we can all dream and build together and believe in each other and help each other and that's what it's all about for that's me so and, cool. and, and toy story is about that if you really look at the themes woody was always all the toys were there for each other we're all here to help each other and we can all be different and quirky we could be like a forky character or we could be a strong buzz lightyear character but we can all get along and we could all have fun together you know that's, that's so true that's I, what it means <laughs> more i you know i got a disney plus account and oh, cool. literally i've just been like watching disney films because i'm like <laughs> the world is so dark and scary yeah it, it can feel like you know it can just feel very not harmonious yeah and so i will like watch disney films and be like oh it doesn't have to, you know you learn so many life lessons from these right. animated characters or fictional stories and yeah. it's it's amazing like to i mean it's just awesome it's beautiful yeah thank you so much and, and not to go back to like the dark place but you know when you said you were bullied i was actually bullied in junior high when i was in school and I remember how dark of a time that felt. And I, I struggled with depression and anxiety. And, and I've shared that with people on my channel. And, and basically I said, you know, it doesn't matter what your life experiences is. It's like, what did you do with that energy? Did you get up right. in, and, and do something positive with it? Or did you just, you know, let, let the bully win and you gave up, right? Or you didn't right. pursue what you wanted to. Right. Yeah. I mean, I always say like, you know, the person who bullied me in, in first grade which is obviously like a different kind of bullying than yeah. other, you know, other parts of childhood. It's still valid, still but, valid, still valid. <laughs> but I always say like, I'm really thankful for that because without that, I wouldn't be an actress. Like I wouldn't have had the, you know, the catalyst to try theater or need an outlet. And so um, that, that to me is like, that's truly how I want to live my life is like yeah. looking at things that are sad or negative or hurtful and hopefully come to a point where they can just be transformational and actually yeah. turn for good but that's harder said I mean easier said than done like yeah we all struggle with that yeah and that's why I always recommend you know if anyone's struggling out there just reach out for help there's a lot of people out there that are trained professionally to, to deal with these things and yeah um you know and that's what I try to foster here is that positive community so I think that's all the questions I had for you today. Um, you did amazing. Thank you so much for joining us on the Today I Grew Up podcast. Um, do you have any words, I guess, of wisdom or advice for anybody out there who may be struggling with either bullying or even struggling with the idea of being a confident voice actress or actress like yourself? <laughs> Wow. Well, I, know I, it's loaded, I, <laughs> I struggle with all of that as well. So I'm not coming from some, you know, no, like fine. elevated point of view, but I would just say like, um, you know, you get those voices in your head that bring up shame and judgment and insecurities and you don't have to listen to it. Like you don't, that doesn't have to be your voice. You don't have to listen to it. You can tune it out and you can also do beautiful things with all of your hardships like we all have the capacity to take a bullying experience and turn it into a redemptive one 
and you know shine a light for other people so there's there's no there's no hardship that needs to just be you know it can I don't know how to say this exactly but yeah I would just that voice in your head that tells you don't go forward you can't you're 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 this or you're that like you're not you have infinite potential and you can be whatever you want to be so um, awesome just tune out that voice thank you so much for sharing that well that's all we have for today guys thank you for tuning in and thank you again emily you're amazing and i can't wait to have you back on another time thank you david i hope you have all a right. great rest of your day and you yeah too. just let me know and i'll i'll be back <laughs> all right sounds great you want the real Bye. buzz like you you're a, now you're an accent figure you are a sad 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 strange little man you are a sad 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 strange little man are a child's plaything! Hey, Ham! Look, I'm Picasso! I don't get it. <laughs>